Hey guys, Orak here, and today I want to talk about Draggable R&R. It is an awesome project made by, made by Masako X and his crew, uh, which is totally not Mark, Malik from Draggable New Age, many talented voice actors, I think Animaji too, and by the way, if you know your YouTube animators, uh, the Dende voice is done by the odd ones out, so that's a fun <laughs> fact. So, what is Draggable R&R? Draggable R&R is an animatic, and for those of you that don't know what an animatic is, it is basically something like an animation, but it's mo it mostly consists of uh, still frames uh, in succession to one another, uh, in, co in combo to some small animations between those frames. I don't know if I made that clear, but I tried. <laughs> and it is based on the what-if scenario that Masako X had made, uh, which is a hit, um, but it is called What If Raditz Sound Good. And it is about the kids, mostly, and by the kids I mean Goten, Trunks, and Rand, which is the daughter, who is the daughter of Raditz. And it's mostly like a slice of life type of animatic slash anime. It's a really well made one because um, <clears throat> it consists of many talented, as I said, uh, people working on it and those talented people have really made it look official uh, with the inclusion of openings, um, mid-rolls, the ending and all of them being in color and being animated. <laughs> Uh, seems really professional and I would really it really made me think that Dragable is a franchise that you could do many things with it and I know that when I talk about Dragable most people think about you know fighting and just feasts after feasts but a slice of life type of anime is really you know suited to Dragable because it has so many characters that are not really used um, in the main continuity anyways, so it would be a nice opportunity to use them in, you know, in a slice of life anyways, <laughs> type of scenario. And yeah, let's talk about the episode in itself. I don't want to go into many spoilers, so I won't be talking about the plot that much, um, because I want you guys to see it, <laughs> you know, but I will talk about it briefly. So, the art is on point, the artwork is really well made, but my only complaint, let's say, is that in the beginning of the episode, I think for the first, I would say three minutes or two minutes, sometimes the art looks a bit weird and looks a bit inconsistent, uh, you know, frame by frame, but then it gets really good and the consistency levels are like off the roof. <laughs> So, one detail I, I really loved, and it's gonna sound really nitpicky, but <laughs> I just love it, is how they, how can I say it, um, how they used the color grey, I mean, the grey color it wasn't just a grey feeling, you know, it was um, those small, uh, it, consisted in co yeah. <laughs> it consisted of many lines that you could see in a manga, for example, when the grey color is depicted and it really feels like a, pro a product that was meant to be on paper but it just found its way on a screen <laughs> it really it really i really like it i don't know how else to say um okay let's talk about the music the sound effects the voice actors i really like the voice acting in this project it's one of the projects that have the most solid voice acting I have ever heard and yeah that's basically uh, mostly I think Masako X is and the other guys direction of the voice actors which I mean the voice actors are really talented but you have to have a really good director so that he, you know he can draw all the potential out of you when you do the voices um, I really liked voices like Raditz Trunks was on point, oh my god, Trunks was like 
the anime trunks. And I really liked Vegeta because Vegeta wasn't just a stereotypical, you know, Chris Sabat impression. It was more than that. It had its own feeling, but you could still see him as, you know, the Sabbath voice. And he had many cool scenes, like the scene... Uh, I won't be going into spoiler territory, but there is a scene that Trunks aggravates, anyways, Vegeta. And Vegeta gets all, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> and uh, it was a moment that really, you know, hair were standing on my arms. It was really good. Sound effects were on point too. I didn't expect that. Um, they were of nice quality and I didn't and they didn't really, you know, they really blend in with the music when I heard it in my earphones. And but the music. I really liked it too. It had that vibe of, you know, it's a fun project, so you won't get like a grand orchestra or you know, stuff like that. Uh, but it was consistent enough and in the draggable feeling and I really liked it. But my only criticism, let's say, which is not really a complaint of mine, but I wanted to point that out, was that when a certain female fusion, anyways, appears, uh, a certain music theme plays. And that theme, it had, you know, it used instruments like flutes and stuff like that. Uh, which I think, as anime fans by default, we associate those instruments with anime like Naruto, Naruto Shippuden, and you know, all that kind of jazz. And you know, it just felt a bit out of place, but it was a good thing, <laughs> don't get me wrong. Um, what else? What else? Oh, and I don't wanna um, like uh, discourage you from watching it just because uh, I said it was a slice of life type of anime. It's more than that, it has some battles and really good ones too. And I didn't really expect that because it was an animatic and I thought, well, there's only some sort of stuff that you can do with an animatic when it comes to battles. But I was really enjoying it. I was really enjoying it. And I really liked how some of the fusions were, yeah, there are fusions that are fighting. Um, you know, those quick paced action, the good voice acting, the sound effects, all really made me, you know, don't think of it as an animatic, but an anime. And what else is there to say? Okay, uh, one thing that might be my complaint, I, I don't run really complaints with Dragable r r with episode 1, but uh, it just felt a bit weird was the humor in some places. There were instances that uh, it was hit and miss, you know. There were some, some puns that were made that felt really draggable-like and I would uh, probably see it in a draggable <laughs> anime sometime. But there were some humor that was a bit... I don't know, I, I would call it unnecessary. For example, there is a scene where Bulma sees a uh, anyways a male fusion and the male fusion is really good looking and Bulma is like oh my god what would uh, what if Vegeta fused with one of those guys would he look so damn sexy and all this sort of thing and it felt a bit out of place for Bulma because um, I think Bulma in like Namek or maybe a bit of the Android saga would react that way, but Bulma nowadays, I don't think she's like that, you know? Um, but that's just my opinion, I don't know. You guys watch the episode and tell me yourselves <laughs> what do you think. But yeah, as you could see, as you can see, I didn't really get into spoiler territory because I want you to see this episode and it really deserves your attention. So I will leave a link to it in the description below. And please head over to Masako X channel and watch it. It really deserves your attention. Thank you guys so much for watching. Tell me your thoughts if you have seen it or you are about to see it. And I guess I'll see you soon. Bye bye. Wanna watch more videos like these? Click one of these right here and make sure to like and subscribe to Orac. Also make sure to follow me on Twitter at Orac
and Amino up too. And always remember, you can only ascend.